Howdy folks. Thanks for joining me in the brewery for a tasting on this fella. Uh, this being what I call the Clipper Heritage Ale. Um, may not ring a lot of bells. <laughs> this is the brew. The video is labelled up as uh, Brew Day took a different direction. I think it was actually what it was labelled as. Went, brew Day went in a different direction. Uh, this was the beer that ended up being brewed the day I was meant to be brewing a sour cucumber and um, pickle, or basically pickle, pickle juice beer. <laughs> but the yeast we had to go with bloody with yeast on the day. And this is the this is the brew we ended up making. Uh, it's the Clipper Malt from South Australia. Um, come about. Now, I've had that malt here for a while, come from Ryan, one of the beer monsters, he's down there in the Barossa. Um, this was back when I was starting to re revitalise it as a potential uh, brewing ingredient. Uh, it's an old old style of, um, of barley. Uh, when we're in the Barossa Valley, we've actually seen a couple of breweries, I think it was three breweries in our three-day um, touring around that were using Clipper in, in their beers. So it's having a, a little bit of a resurgence, and I, I, I wanted to use the two killers I had here. I bought some um, 20 litres of Mount Lofty spring water from South Australia while I was down there, brought it home, put on a beer. Because things went awry, um, I made changes at the end of the mash around what, where the beer was going. So I made big changes to uh, where the hopping and stuff was. So basically what I did is I took... Um, hopping profile that I've used previously on a Black Rock Golden Ale as part of the Extractor Ganser brews. Yeah. I'll put brews up to the um, actual brew day for this beer um, and I'll stick a link up to that um, well, I keep pointing up there because that's any point. I'll put a link up to the Extractor Ganser brew as well that's a really nice beer um, but with some uh, American hops basically and it made a really nice American style sort of pale ale type of beer. Um, so I've put them into this beer because I knew that was a combination that, that worked, you know, really well. So just quickly on the beer. Two kilos of Clipper. It was a 12 litre batch. Two kilos of the Clipper. 700 grams of Voyager Pilsner. Uh, 275 grams of Cara Rye. 100 light dry malt and 100 of Dex. Um, mashed at 65 uh, with a 74 mash out. Little bit of gypsum, half the half as much chloride, touch of magnesium just to give the water a little bit of a little bit of a buzz. Um, in the boil we had Simcoe at 40 minutes, uh, Citra, El Dorado and Amarillo, three minutes in left in the boil. Uh, not a lot of any of them. Um, you can the rest be there, but uh, it was six rounds of Simcoe, ten grams each of the Citra, El Dorado, Amarillo. Dropped a California lager yeast, dry yeast, onto that. Um, it was out of date by two years. Um, so I added four grams of USO5 onto that, um, just to help it along. Uh, OG 1040 uh, fermented 18 degrees. Um, went along all right. Dry hopped on what was day six with 10 grams each of the Amarillo Citron Mosaic. Um, added CO2 to the fermenter at that stage, bumped it up to 18 PSI. It had been just fermenting up without any pressure. Uh, and two days later, I dropped it to 1.8 degrees for a cold crash. Bottling day was the 4th of August, so it was Two for four day, yeah, two day cold crash. So fourth of August. So this is all but six weeks old at the moment. Um, I had planned on tasting this a little bit earlier, but just didn't get to it. Um, that's so I don't know. It's gonna, probably going to show up a little bit darker, but it's like a classic American pale ale sort of colour. It's um, deep golden amber. Um, it's Moderately, moderately clear whilst being a little bit opaque. This isn't the best glass for showing clarity, but it's got a really nice, yeah, 
typical American pale ale sort of a nose. No, let's have a let's have a go at her. As I said original gravity was 1040. Finished at 1010 for an ABV of 3.9%. So it's lightish as far as ABV goes for yeah an American pale ale. Um, and again, I wasn't looking particularly for an American pale ale. Um, I sort of called it's called the Clipper Heritage Ale. It doesn't really fit into any categories. And um, I'm happy with that. I'm just happy to call it just a generic, yeah, American style ale. Um, despite the fact that it's you know, the South Australian malt and the South Australian water, but uh, yeah, the California lager yeast, yeah, blends into that sort of side of things. You know, I've had one glass of this, oh, I don't know, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, not long after, but actually onto the tap. It's drinking really nice. Um, it's a really tasty beer. It's got plenty of flavour. It's nice malt. There's good hops there. Um, they're all sitting there just mingling together, giving a really classic American flavour without being anybody dominated. There's no domination from any citrus or any pine or any you know, any danky notes, but they're all there in sort of equal quantities all playing their part. Probably sits more on the dinky piney side than it does on the fruity side as, as an overall finish. Um, but again, that's more that old school, more traditional American pale ale sort of a vibe than it is a modern sort of a finish. Um, I'm getting a little bit of the mosaic, uh, which is cutting a little bit, and I <clears throat> wasn't sure about adding that into the dry. Um, Probably should have just gone for um, a bit of the El Dorado instead of the mosaic, but but it's not I mean, it's not it's not ruining the beer anyway. It's still quite drinkable. Um, it's probably a little bit light on bitterness. But but not massively. It's not as it's not as noticeable as that first tasting I had the other week, uh, I think it was when it was a bit younger, uh, it was more noticeable. The sweetness of the malt has settled just a little bit with that little bit more you know, time to condition. Um, so that it doesn't sit really in any style, it doesn't really tick any style boxes, um, and it'd probably get really, it'd probably get hammered in it like in competition for that because it doesn't really sit anywhere um, but uh, but just as a beer to just sit down and drink it's bloody yeah it's still in the business it's probably a little over carbonated it's quite light and zesty in the mouth um, which I think Oh, it's working two ways because that is helping to bring up that bitterness a little bit. It is giving a little bit more bite on the tongue. Uh, I think maybe the last time I drank it, it probably didn't quite have quite as much fizz in it, um, so it was tending a little bit, a little bit sweeter. So it's balanced out, but it's not much. Uh, but I think it would, like, you know, when I give it a little bit of movement, there is quite a bit of gas in there. Um, it didn't pour particularly like heady or anything. Um, but yeah, there is a bit, bit there, so I would probably look to pull it down. And I'm not going to hazard a guess. I'm not going to tell you what the actual level is, but I'd imagine from taste, it's probably sitting about 2.6 to 2.8, you know, volumes of CO2. It probably should be down 2.2 to 2.4. So it's not, it's not too far off. But yeah, that's the only, that's the only thing I can fault it on. Other than that, it's a really, really pleasant beer. Sitting really nice. I mean, I, 
Don't know how much impact directly the California Lager Geese has had as opposed to that bit of USA flight. But the O5 on its own was never going to get this beer finished. So the, the Lager Geese has definitely had a reasonable impact. And the body is just sitting beautiful. It's like it's, it's malt, but it's it's got some depth. Well, like I said, it's still light. That carbonation is helping to keep that body a little bit lighter. Again, if you bring that down, it's going to bring the body up a little bit. But it's it's working. It's not. You know, it's not super clean and super crisp. It's not like lager snappiness, but it's still got a nice lagerish sort of feel about it. I'm not happy to just keep going back. Um, so, well, as it stands, if I, could, if I was to give it a rating, I'd give it eight out of ten, um, which for me is a decent score. Um, that's it. I think with that little bit less carbonation in the bottle, I think would be it would bring it up a little bit for me. I think it would become just all, all around just a little bit more uh, enjoyable, a bit more of a um, beer to sort of sip on a little bit. Um, but at 3.9%, it's certainly a beer you can session without a problem. And there's certainly no reason why you couldn't session that. It's not too much of anything. It's not too hoppy. It's not too malty. It's not, yeah, it's all good. So for me, it's a thumbs up. For a, comp yeah, for such a big change in the middle of brew day, um, that's really come up good. But it does sort of, it points you know, towards that having a, doesn't hurt to have a backup go-to hop combo you know, um, in your repertoire. You know, so when something does go wrong like this, you go, okay, grab that, boom, and you can throw it in, knowing it's going to work. Like, that's a hot combination I know it's going to get me a good quality beer, and I can throw it at pretty much any sort of base um, and yeast, and it's going to work It's going to work pretty good. So uh, if you haven't done that sort of combo, it's definitely worth looking at. Um, works really well you change the ratios a little bit to fine tune exactly what it is you want to push where you want to push you know if you want to push more of the pine with the Simcoe if you want to push more of the Citra um, you certainly as, as far as this recipe goes you certainly could push that Simcoe addition to 60 minutes to get a little bit more bitterness initially out of it um, and that would probably take off a little bit of the, uh, you know, the piney sort of note. But certainly as it's warming a little bit, that level is coming up. Um, it certainly wouldn't hold onto much more IBU before we would become out of balance. So, yeah, something to think about if you if you do look at it and want to play around with. But that's a good bit. That's a, that's a good beef. Um, I'm 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 really happy with that's finished up. Uh, that keg's gonna get yeah drunk to the end, like not all kegs do around here. But that one, I've got a funny feeling certainly will. Um, that's gonna be a really nice beer over the uh, next you know eight to twelve weeks leading into you know into summer. Lovely. Anyway, got any comments or any questions? Stick them down the bottom. Patrons of the channel, thumbs up guys. Thank you very much for your support. It's incredibly welcome. Keeps the channel going. If you're interested, there's a link down the bottom of Patreon. If you subscribe to the channel, thank you. If you aren't subscribed, again, hit the subscribe button down the bottom. Ring the little bell, hit the notification button. You don't miss any videos that way. Um, and if you like what's going on in the video, hit the thumbs up sign down there as well. But for now, that's me. Clipper Heritage Ale. The beer that didn't go, <laughs> that wasn't the beer that was intended. It's the beer we got, hey, and there's nothing wrong with it. Anyway, till I see the next video, we brew on beer, drink and beer, or talk and beer. Good brewing.